All right. This is Ed Carbajal with Spectation Sports. I'm speaking with Christian Eccles, who faces T. Cummins at Attitude MMA Fights uh, 27, June 10th. Um, Christian, it's a, a pleasure to talk to you. Um, I was just trying not to fanboy out too much before we started recording, but I mean, <laughs> folks that, that know about you, they know about your, your fight in Bellator. So it's actually one of my first questions is, you know, um, what happened after that? I, I felt like I, I was going to see more of you and then like, and then, and then they never used you again or what happened there? Uh, so I got brought in to lose the fight. I mean, that was the <laughs> whole, their, their whole objective was bring me in, hype up Pat Downey and, uh, mm. you know, pass me back along. But I was on the, uh, I had like restarted my career. I had found myself, I had like found out who I wanted to be and like really dedicated to fighting. I was on a two fight win streak at the time. Uh, hadn't really fought anybody high level yet. I was kind of trying to work my way up and, Dude, I went in there and like I proved to everybody like I'm a new me. I'm not this two and two. I'm not the zero and two guy that I started out as. And mm -hmm. uh, you know, s since then it was kind of like bef it, that was a big opportunity for me. So I, I don't want to say I took what I could get, but I pretty much did. I mean, Bellator offered me a fight, and I wasn't gonna argue like, oh, I'm only do it if I get three fights. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay, you're you're gonna pay me decent, and you're gonna bring me in for one fight. That's fine. I'll. I'll beat this guy and then that'll blast things off a little bit. Even if you send me back to the regional scene, I'm going to keep winning either way. So I'm coming mm -hmm. back to the, either Bellator or the UFC either way. So that's kind of what happened. They just, they brought me in to lose. I ruined their plans. They sent me back <laughs> to the regional scene and now I'm on the climb. Yeah. I mean, um, you, the, one of the things I wanted to ask you was because, I mean, if folks that know you from that fight, um, are probably just to be surprised to hear that, that you have a lot, a lot of your wins by submission, you know, because of, you know, what they see versus what's on paper. So one of the things I wanted to ask you, I, I saw your uh, uh, BJJ, uh, your brown belt still, right? Yes, sir. So I wanted to ask you, like, was jiu-jitsu your path into mixed martial arts? Uh, it was. So really, I started out with stand-up. My dad was a Golden Glove boxer three times before I was mm. born. And uh, I was kind of born into boxing. And MMA wasn't real big yet. So he retired from boxing. And... I was at the time I was a really young kid. So, you know, I was hitting the bag. I was hitting the speed bag. I was doing all the little workouts and stuff. And my dad was just like, oh, you know, I, I was kind of his little like project, you know, his little prodigy. He was going to build me into a fighter and he did so. But, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's kind of how I was brought into it was my dad was a, a boxer turned fighter. Uh, he took about a four year layoff and then MMA started hyping up and he was like, oh, I want to try that. <laughs> and uh, hopped into MMA and man, it's just like carried on from him to me. And I've, I've just always dreamed about my dad had a family with three kids before right, when he was doing MMA. So he could never really fully dedicate himself. And I have a I mean, I have a daughter myself, but I've uh, I found ways to in the newer times of MMA, like where people want to support a little bit more. I found ways to support myself and be able to take care of my daughter and, you know, continue this fighting career and do this full time. It's uh, it can be a struggle, but it's, it's going to be worth it eventually. So I just keep on trucking but yeah my dad man he's uh he was the one that brought me into the sport it wasn't necessarily jiu-jitsu it was boxing and mm. then he found his way to jiu-jitsu and i just followed with him yeah like boxing is kind of like the original og combat sport before mma came along in the 90s and stuff so it's pretty crazy that uh that uh that's that's how you got into it i mean it explains the ko obviously that people know about but um yeah. would you say that that so I mean, because like on paper, pe folks are going to think you're a submission guy, but uh, I, I, does striking come naturally to you because of your, your background and your family and stuff? Uh, I think so. I have good striking and it's not that I'm not confident in it. It's just this is really how I, I've lost two fights, you know, like I've been on the bad side of things. And this is how I truly look at the, my fighting career. If I can take if I can out wrestle you. And I mean, I've the only people that really can wrestle with me are college wrestlers, like deep, really, like really honestly good college wrestlers are the ones that like give me fits. So if you can't wrestle with me, then I'm going to wrestle you, take you down. I'm going to beat on you, make you one out. And then whenever you give me a submission, I'm going to submit you. But if you work on wrestling hard enough and you're good enough at it, and you stop me. I do have my hands to kind of rely on. So like I'm confident in them if they need to be used. But if, I don't have to take that 50 50 shot of like, you could knock me out. I could knock you out. Why would I, I want, I mean, I want to make the most amount of money in the most efficient way throughout my fighting career. 
Yeah, well, what's that saying? You you don't get paid by the hour, you get paid by by the job at hand or whatever the saying is. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Pat Downey tried to say that his first fight. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so uh, the funny thing that I I I found out because I I spoke to your opponent too for Attitude MMA. Um, he mentioned you guys are are not only I mean you guys are a little more than familiar with each other. You guys like know each other. I'm sorry, you cut out there. Did you say T? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, T, 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 yeah, T. He said he, uh, you guys, know each other. Like you're familiar with each other from just you know being around this training in the same area and stuff. Because is uh, the fight's kind of like a, a almost like a friendly uh, face off, is it? Yeah. So me and T's followed each other on social media for a little while now. He's liked my stuff. I've liked his stuff. And like, man, mm -hmm. I'm a fan of the sport. First, honestly, like I know a lot of people say that, but like, I truly am. I'm a fan of these regional level guys the guys in the ufc like i'm if you're doing good dude i'm rooting for you if you have to fight me obviously in this case i'm not rooting for you but uh <laughs> yeah man the last couple of years you know we've just liked each other's stuff and we've never really shared each other's stuff but we've always commented mm -hmm. or liked and just kind of been mutual we got a few like jaleel willis trains down there at uh uh kill cliff where i just went and trained for a couple of weeks you know like that's kind of one of our mutual mm -hmm. acquaintances or friends whatever you want to call it so like we're in the same community, of course, but when it comes down to it, I mean, I'll fight anybody. I mean, I wouldn't fight necessarily like one of my teammates from this gym, but like if you're from around here, I would rather fight outside of fighters like outside of this area because we're not huge. You know, in the Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi area, I feel like we're not mm -hmm. like as far along as some of the other states. So I would prefer that like I fight guys from elsewhere. But I mean, if you're on the come up, I'm on the come up. It's just got to happen. Yeah, eventually you're gonna cross paths, and and you gotta, you know, you gotta put the, uh, the the whatever familiarity aside, and worry about the task yeah. at hand. I think I think it takes a special kind of athlete and a special kind of sport to do that. Um, so what do you know about him as far as like his background? I know you. I mean, the fact that you guys follow each other, it's almost like a double-edged sword. Like you guys kind of know each other's games from what you've seen displayed wherever you watch each other. So how how do you approach a fight like this? I've never really watched, I mean, until we got lined up to fight each other, I never watched a whole lot of film on him, but I had followed his stuff and I seen that he was a real good body or he was like good at bodybuilding or not bodybuilding, powerlifting and stuff. So I knew he was a strong guy. Um, he seems like he's got good kicks, but I mean, really, I haven't looked too much into his social media. I'm just like pounding away at training mm -hmm. all the time. And I, cause I'm taking, I'm taking tea for real. Like I've watched film on him. And mm -hmm. I've constantly practiced it trying, I mean, I'm going to beat this guy. So mm -hmm. it's just like, I haven't really focused too much on like what he's doing now, but like necessarily how hard can I work and what has he done in the past? Like what's his tendencies whenever he gets in the cage? So that's really mm -hmm. about how I have went about this fight camp. Nothing in particular, like watching up close, like with Pat Downey, I was watching his social media. I was like trying to figure out how this guy <laughs> lived. Cause I, I mean, he was an Olympic athlete. So I was like, this guy's gotta be, or he was an Olympic alternate or whatever. So, I mean, I was like, this guy's got to be doing something special, but mm -hmm. I never seen he was doing anything special. So like, after that fight, I was like, you know, maybe I'm doing the right things. I need to chill out on like stalking my <laughs> opponents and just kind of, uh, you know, watch film, do it, do it the right mm -hmm. way and not stress over too much of what he's doing. It makes me, it makes me want to ask, especially with the, I mean, you, with your, with the history you mentioned with your dad, what's your opinion on, on preparing for opponents? Cause if you look at like, if you look at the old school guys, like, like, Wanderlei Silva used to say, I don't study or do anything for anybody. I just train the same way and, and be ready to, to enter the cage and deal with whatever happens. What's your take on like, like, I mean, studying, obviously you said you've just, you just said you did it, but like overall, what, what do you think is the best approach when you're, when you're, if no matter who's fighting, what's your best approach for preparing for a fight like this? Man, I would say just like, I don't know if you ever heard the saying of like go into that dark place when you're just like dog tired and like your coach is pushing you. He's on your butt. He's just like, come on, come on, come on. Like you're constantly pushing like in your head, man, you want to quit, but you just like keep pushing at the end of the workout. You're like, whoo, that was almost the end of me, but I made it. You know, uh, I believe if you go to that place almost every day and you're constantly working hard and like I, I mean you definitely need to watch your opponent i think i think you need to see what their tendencies are you need to see what they like to do most mm -hmm. of the time and i know he hasn't fought in a year so some things will probably change but that's where it goes back to like 
if something happens, you know, like, and it does turn into a dog fight, I'm in mm-hmm. that dark place every day in my mind. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep pushing no matter if he's a totally different fighter or not. I'm ready to fight no matter if mm-hmm. it's ground, wrestling, stand up. I'm, uh, I, I think I, as long as you're prepared for all of it, you're good. And you're willing to go deep into the late rounds and like really push it out. Yeah. And, and when I, you know, with fights at your level and, and, and in the future, you don't want to take anyone lightly, especially when you're trying to reach goals of like trying to get in the UFC or back in Bellator or what have you. So that's definitely, uh, that's definitely, I, I understand where you're coming from with, with that. Um, so uh, I, I hate asking fighters for predictions, but people always want to hear that. So your prediction for, for June 10th, uh, do you have one? How, how would you like to pick up the W? Uh, I could tell you how I'd like to see it play out. I'd, I'd like to see, uh, I know he's, I mean, he, he brought in the, uh, off brand version of me. Oh, Dylan Buka <laughs> brought my boy in to come get him ready for some wrestling. And, uh, <laughs> man, I, I just, I really don't think Dylan Buka can wrestle like I can. I know he wrestled in college, but like, mm-hmm. like I said earlier, man, it really, even when I went down to kill Cliff, you know, like everybody there was good at wrestling, but like the only ones that like was making me be like, Oh crap, I've got to fix what I'm doing wrong right now was the guys that wrestled at Minnesota. And these guys are like, uh, I mean, one of them was a Bellator champ. Like these guys are real deal college mm. ex college wrestlers, high level. And I just don't think he can wrestle on level. So I feel like he brought him in and really kind of wasted Dylan's time because he's just not going to be able to stop my wrestling. So I would say he probably gets submitted in the first or knocked out in the second. Hmm. Well, That's I mean, I'm, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm definitely excited to watch the fight. Um, it's June 10th, Attitude MMA Fights 27. Um, Christian, if you want to um, uh, shout out your sponsors or, or you know, give give your uh, plug anything, uh, by all means, go right ahead. Yeah, I got it. So I'm terrible at doing the sponsor stuff, but you boy, come prepared to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I started keeping a journal with all my sponsor stuff in it. So I, I'm starting to mix up in my head. So I got to write it all down. But uh, I got Garrison Family Construction located in Decatur, Alabama. Big shout out to them. And all these guys, they helped pay for my trip down to South Florida to get ready for this fight. They've all been a super huge help. And like I really couldn't have made that trip without them. Everything was comfortable wise down there. Everything went great. But uh, Craig's Battery. Rock and Roll Sushi, Bad Monkey Fabrication, Daniel Ramey's Playground Equipment, Brocus Metal Buildings, Mason Jones Real Estate, Mr. Plumber, Blackout Barbell. They, uh, I just started a collab with them. They're super great to work with. They're like a workout qu- equipment type company. Uh, and then Race Tire Service. It's my dad's business. Um, nice. Yeah, those are all my sponsors. I want to say thank you to all of you guys. You guys have made life so much easier throughout this fight camp. I could I wouldn't be the fighter every day without such great sponsors. I got a lot of them that come back and they're constantly helping me out in any way they can. Uh, and plug this shirt right here. So we just did a collab blackout barbell shirt. It's got the vanilla gorilla on the back. Oh, my, wow. That's uh, nice. I always do. Yeah. I do the cornrows at my fight. So they threw their logo in the center, put the braids around it, man. They've, uh, they've been super cool to work with. They're just wanting to help me out any way they can. They've gave me a bunch of clothes to work out and a rep and stuff. So thank you, Blackout, and the rest of my sponsors. That's great. And not for nothing, I, I got to say it because not everybody comes as prepared as <laughs> that other. I interviewed a lot of fighters, and a lot of times they're like, oh, man, I forgot. So fighters, take note. Do what Christian just did because that was actually that <laughs> hey, was man. really great. <laughs> thank you to all you fighters coming up. Get you a journal, write some <laughs> stuff down, and, like, you got it handy, man, because – Listen, I, I truly believe if you're going to be a fighter, you got to have a screw or two loose in your head. So if you're on the same <laughs> level I'm at, you know, you need that extra little help with the memory. 100%. Well, thank you again, Christian. Again, uh, where can folks follow you, by the way? I know I found you on Instagram, but are you just on Instagram? Where can folks follow you, uh, your career on social media? Uh, so Instagram is where I mainly post my fighting stuff. I try to keep it like strictly fighting. I used to have it kind of like my personal and I've switched it over. I've just kind of kept it. I already had a decent following, but it's vanilla mm-hmm. gorilla MMA on Instagram. Uh, Christian Eccles. I have a fan page that I don't really use, but I have my main page that I keep everybody like up to date with on my fight stuff for Facebook. Um, I don't really do Twitter a whole lot, but it's mainly just Facebook and Instagram and I'm, I'm building my TikTok. I haven't, 
I haven't had one of those videos pop off like all these other people, but uh, <laughs> hey, one day, you know, I'm gonna keep doing it until one day one of them pops off. Yeah, you got to take a dance class to get good on TikTok, apparently. <laughs> oh, you do. For sure. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, well, th thank you so much for the time. Good luck to you. And uh, for folks that want to watch, again, it's June 10th right here on Spectation Sports. Thank you, brother. I appreciate you having me on.